Hello and welcome to this review of my Clickies switches. These are a very highly anticipated development. I did a teardown video of these two or so weeks ago where I showed how they worked and that was quite well received. So today we're going to look at how they actually perform. Hence, I pulled out the GMMK Pro and switched out the main block keys for clickies. Specifically, this is the 60 gram or more accurately 73 gram version. There is also a 100 gram or more accurately 95 gram version or in Imperial units gobbledygookty lubberfutte and shenaniganty lubber quotation mark. Personally, I prefer the lighter one, but for the more fist-handed people among you, the stiffer weighting of these might be more suitable. The GMMK Pro has a rather heavy chassis, and the keycaps are pretty thick, which will influence the sound compared to some of the others. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to review the keyboard itself again, as that one already has its own dedicated video. I'm just doing the switches here. This just happens to be a good host for them. So let's start with the background. The Clickies switches are essentially a hybrid between Alps and Cherry switches by taking an Alps SKCM style click leaf and sticking it in a Cherry MX style housing. This would theoretically allow one to get the feel of Alp switches while maintaining the compatibility of Cherry MX switches. Note that compatibility in this context is specifically things like keycap mount, pinout, plate profile, etc. The actual parts themselves are similar to, but mostly not interchangeable with, Cherry MX parts. The idea behind this switch is actually not new. In the mid or late 80s, there was a very obscure and extremely rare type of Cherry MX clone, which worked in almost exactly the same way, the Pro World clones, which are similarly an Alps style click leaf in an MX type housing. These come from an unknown manufacturer, which presumably also made the Key World and Pod World switches, which are related to designs. These three were found in old SKB and PDC keyboards, which were again made by an unknown manufacturer. Also, I've managed to secure two of the Pro World switches, courtesy of Vintkeys.ca. I think he has a few left to sell, so definitely check him out if you're interested. Link in the description below. These Pro World switches served as the base for the Clickies design and are almost exactly the same except for the materials used to make the housing and the stem, which is Gatoron's cap type, where the hole and pole are reversed. There are also some small differences in the leaf spring itself. The teeth are at a slightly more acute angle and are bent backwards more, plus the corners are docked. I'm not completely sure why, to be honest. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if the spring weight is different. So there are some differences in the details, but largely it's identical. There were also IROX switches, which are basically the same idea, except done in the opposite way. They're Alps style switches with MX type keycap mount, but those kind of faded into obscurity because they were only sold in Japan and on Lego style toy keyboards. We'll be taking a short look at these again later. So the magic ingredient in these switches is, of course, the click leaf. This is basically a leaf spring with hooked teeth on it, which provides the tactile bump and clicky sound when it's pulled forward and then released. In my opinion, this gives a far more satisfying and genuine tactile feel than the notch-type tactility MX-style switches are inherently limited to, instead of the sawtoothy, rough, scratchy feeling that you get from notches that MX switches use, such as with, for example, Cherry MX Brown, these click leaves give a single, defined, crisp tactile event, which is much nicer. Also, like Alp switches, you can modify the switch to linear by taking out the leaf, and uniquely even switch it to tactile non-clicky by moving the leaf ahead of the slot it's normally housed in, which, by the way, is accompanied by a significant increase in tactility. It's not as easy to do as it is with Alp switches because these switches open from the bottom rather than from the top and the tactile mod is a bit fiddly because the leaves can be a bit annoying to fit in properly I think. But the fact that you can fully reversibly mod this to linear or super tactile with a single design without using any extra parts is quite remarkable in my opinion. Speaking of tactility, it's... <laughs> quite something. In Alp switches, this is mainly determined by the angle of the teeth. The more they stick out, the more tactile the switch is. As an example, Amber Alps are a more tactile version of Blue Alps, because even though they have the same click leaf, the teeth are set at the more acute angle, so these have a much greater tactile drop. 
But these clickies switches have an even greater tactile drop at Amber Alps at about 40 grams. Now for comparison, that's roughly the same as box jade and navy switches. Amber Alps, which are also super tactile, have a drop of 30 grams and Blue Alps only about 10 to 15. Here's a comparison of what the leaves look like in detail. As you can see, the angle is set at a similar angle to that of Amber Alps, perhaps slightly more angled even. It's definitely a lot steeper than that of Blue Alps regardless. The idea behind the tactile mod is that it first of all puts the leaf spring forward of the switch housing so that it can no longer slam against it, which removes the clicky sound, although I should mention that it's not the most silent tactile only switch I've ever heard. If you want a really silent switch you should probably either manually dampen it with some paper or grease or something, or get a different switch design. Anyway, like I said, this also brings with it an increase in tactility, which is caused by the leaf being pushed into a reclining position, so that the teeth are effectively put at a more acute angle than they would be if the leaf would be standing upright, and that's what causes them to feel more tactile. So much so that the drop is now actually 70 grams of force, which off the top of my head is the biggest tactile drop of any switch I know. However, the peak force also increases, obviously, so the relative tactility is about 60%, which is only about 7% higher than that of the unmodded switch, and roughly the same as box jades. Also, it changes the type of feel a bit. Zeal asked Nebulant to measure some force curves of these tactile modded switches for me, although this is technically a user mod and no longer a commercial product at this point, and you can clearly see that the tactile bump is higher up and it is of a different shape. The drop is not quite as sheer as before, which makes sense of course because you're no longer working with two parallel, well-separated surfaces, so the vertical axis travel is distorted compared to the unmodified switches. It's still pretty sharp though, and it's hella tactile, let me tell you that. Anyway, this brings us to the first of three questions I want to address in this video. 1. Are these the same as Alps? And I think because they are so much more tactile, the answer to that is, well, no, not really, but there is some Alps DNA in there. If I compare it to my custom Apple IIc with Amber Alps, which are the closest in tactility and have almost exactly the same weighting as it happens, I can very easily tell the difference with my eyes closed. This feels more like an on-off flip switch, and the force feels like it's all concentrated right at the start, like you're going over a bump and then it's just a black hole, whereas Alps Alps, at least by comparison, feel more like they have full travel. So if you ask, is it the same as Alps? No, but it feels more like Alps than cherries or click bars at least. They also wobble considerably less than Alp switches, which may be partially because of the gator on cap stem. For comparison, the F row switches here are glorious pandas, and this is what Alps are like. So, you know, there is some difference there. Now, personally, I don't give a rat's ass about Wobble, but some people go absolutely nuts over it, so I figured I'd mention it before I forget. I also wanted to compare them to Matthias's and Irox switches, specifically the undampened version, and again, it feels quite different. These two feel closer to Alps, but the clickies are just different. They're smoother, by the way, but almost lumpen by comparison because of that huge tactility. Again, it's like half the travel isn't even there because of how rapidly you fall through it. It's actually a bit much for me. I definitely like them, don't get me wrong, but I would be very interested in what the clickies would feel like if they had a milder tactile bump like the one on Blue Alps. I think that would be a natural step for a second type to bring out personally. I mean, I type pretty accurately on these because of the strong tactility and somewhat stiff weighting means that it's not so easy to get accidental key presses. But I think it would be a bit more comfortable, for me at least, if the tactility were reined in a little bit. The tactile modded switches especially, which I only tried on the WASD cluster for a little bit by the way, are way too overbearing for me. That's for real tactility junkies. Like I said, I think they may be the most tactile switches on the market right now. Not in all of time, I know one special switch that was more than 90% tactile, also an Alps design as it happens, but that's completely disappeared off the face of the earth somehow.
interestingly, the feel is much closer to the Pro World switches, as far as I can tell. Now, I only have two switches to play with, which means that this is going to be a very bad indication, but it's the best I can do with the limited means at my disposal at the moment, unfortunately. Anyway, the Pro Worlds have a similar feel to them. It's a bit hard to describe, but again, it's not the same as Alps. The Kalikis are a lot smoother though, and I'd say a bit more tactile as well. Plus, they sound a lot bassier. And speaking of which, the sound of the clickies is also not the same as that of the original Alp switches, but this is much harder to compare because this is not just dependent on things like switch shape and material, but it's very chassis and keycaps dependent. And because Alps are only found in old keyboards, their chassis and caps tend to be quite different from what's currently available on the market. Vintage chassis are often so roomy that they essentially act like a resonance chamber, which is why these old Alps boards tend to sound so orchestral, so to speak. But the switches themselves, perhaps because of their shape or material, or maybe the lack of a knocker on the leaves, I don't know, it could be anything, definitely sound different. So this is really not easy to compare one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm going to try what I can. I picked this Northgate Omni key, which is probably the closest I have in construction to the GMMK Pro, as it's also a rather taut metal chassis without a lot of free space inside it. But anyway, here's a sound comparison between it and the clickies in the GMMK Pro. Yeah, so there is clearly a substantial difference here. Again, a lot of that will be due to the chassis though, but that can't be helped unfortunately. I mean, don't get me wrong, they still sound miles better than Cherry MX or even click bar switches, so they're definitely a step up in the sound department compared to the modern alternatives. Cherries are rattly, plasticky and high pitched and this makes them sound like ass. Click bar switches don't rattle, they have a nice sharp click event, but they're also high pitched and they don't sound quite as meaty because the clicker is so thin and small, while the clickies have a sharp click that's much fuller and bassier in sound because the clicker is so much larger. I also lined up one of the Pro World switches by the way, just for fun. So here's a side by side sound comparison with some thick double shot SA keycaps, just for the hell of it. Of these, I'd say the clickies definitely come out on top sound-wise. So, with that first question answered, let's move on to the second question. Do these Cherry Alps hybrids bring out the best of both worlds? Or is it some sort of unholy mongrel? Help me! Well, maybe it's not quite all the best of both worlds, but they do have a lot of advantages. The click leaf lends itself to a very nice tactile feel, and although I personally think it's overdone with leaves set at this acute an angle, the type of tactility is still similar and feels very clean, crisp and satisfying. It feels meaty and truly as if you're typing on the clicker rather than on the return spring, which is a good thing by the way. And the sound is definitely an improvement over current MX type market switches, I think. So, to recap, so far we've established that these aren't the same as Alps, and they don't 100% fill the same niche either. But are they a good design of their own? That's the third question I want to address in this video. And the answer to that is by far the easiest of the three, namely, yes. Alps are nice, very nice in my opinion, but they have many disadvantages as well. They're expensive and difficult to get because they're no longer produced. They have very little PCB and plate compatibility. They don't fit modern keycap sets and they're notoriously susceptible to bad condition, which is one more reason why it's so nice that these clickies are commercially available brand new. Taking arguably the most important ingredients from Alp switches and marrying them to the compatibility, dust resistance and modern availability 
capability of an MX type design seems like a natural choice that therefore does have advantages over both of its parent designs. Can it beat Alps at all its own games in the process? I don't think so, but I don't think this is a sloppy compromise either, it's just different. The two main losses are that the sound is not as good, but that's very subjective to begin with, and the lack of an ability to open the switches while they're still mounted to the board. But with a hot swappable chassis like this, where you can just take out the whole switch without desoldering, that's less of an issue than ever. By the way, that's why I think hot swap keyboards like this are a perfect matchup for these switches. I think this is a really cool development and it's well done. I really hope he brings out some version with a more subtle tactile bump in line with what Blue Alps felt like because I think I'd like those more than these. But especially as a first step, this is pretty excellent. They feel very affirmative and I'm making almost no typing mistakes on these because they don't give in too easily to accidental key presses. If you've never strayed outside MX territory, I think you'll be quite astonished by what these have to offer and even tactility junkies will be pleasantly surprised by that 70 gram drop I think. Plus that non-clicky turbo tactile mode is definitely something else and let alone if he brings out versions that feel like brown or neon green or orange or salmon alps etc. There's going to be so much you can do with these switches. At the moment clickies are on sale for about $1.30 per switch from Zeal himself. Now, I noticed a lot of people in the comments on the teardown video saying that that's a lot, but frankly, if you're used to seeing Alps prices, it's nowhere near as shocking. Remember that it uses quite different parts from Cherry MX, so you need completely different tooling anyway, so honestly, the price is not completely unjustified, I think. A dollar thirty for a true MX type switch, that's maybe a different story. A bunch of people also asked if these have mismatched click and actuation. Now normally I don't address this in my videos unless it's very noticeable or unless they are inherently aligned, but I just want to point out that almost no switches have inherently aligned actuation and click events. People seem to be under the impression that this is the case with Cherry MX, which it's not. The only ones I can think of that are in current production are Buckling Springs and Razer's Clicky Light Strike Libra switches. The other seven or so designs I know of that have had this have been out of production for decades. In any case, the misalignment is really not noticeable on these clickies. It's just after the tactile bump. So don't worry about that. If you can't notice it with Cherry MX, you won't notice it with these either. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on these switches.